Hello, and welcome to A Place to Call Home. It's our weekly series where we talk about everything. We are here with our very special guests. They are all the way from Lake Charles, Louisiana. I'd like to welcome to the show once again, Miss Connie Lewis, and say welcome to Miss Kishai. Yes, ma'am. Barty. They are here with the New Steps Reentry Program for Youth. We're here to talk about that this half hour. And Miss Connie, I know that you've been on the battlefield for this program <laughs> a very, very long yes. time. Yes, I am. So tell me this time around uh, what we're dealing with. Well, basically, um, what is New Steps? Because we New talked about another program. New Steps Reentry for Youth is my overall organization. It was uh, what God had blessed me with. It he, God had given me the name and everything of the organization. I used to work for another organization, but it wasn't on the reentry side. So I said, whenever God was going to bless me or wanted me to start my own, I would do the reentry side of the program. And so that's that's how New Steps Reentry came about. Um, but it's, it's for people that have been affected by incarceration, recidivism, going in and out of jail, and violence in their lives. Now, it's a reentry program for youth. So what ages yes. are we talking about? We're talking about ages uh, 15 to 25 for one program because God has blessed us to extend the program a little bit because we've basically been working with men that are and ha coming out of the halfway house lately. So he's really just kind of blessed us to, to just really expand in different areas, and I just really thank God for that. Um, we've had about 40 to 50 men every month for our meetings. They come from the halfway house, and we, we've been doing workshops and stuff with them. Um, and they're doing really well, and they're very excited about coming into the, me to the meetings every month. Now, Keisha, how would you get involved with this program? Like I said, when she was involved in the other organization that actually dealt with the children that were incarcerated, she met me through a friend of mine that I had grown, grown up in childhood with. This person expressed to her that this is what she said. She said I was brilliant, <laughs> which sometimes you don't even see it in yourselves, but I thank That's God right. that others could see it in me. That's right. And she linked me with Miss Connie, and we went to the Capitol. That was my very first time ever even interacting with her and interacting with the group. But because I could pick up so quickly with what they told me, I was even able to interact on the level that they were interacting and the relationship just solidified from yes. there. Yes. And when she transitioned from that organization to the one that she's currently over, um, I was there with her, I was, I was you know, really just, Miss Connie, you know you can do this, God told you to do this, mm -hmm. you know, it's your time, it's your season, Support system. things are moving around and shifting, so move forward. And she, she hunkered down, she really had to hunker down to do this, because you know, life is life. And she wrote out her plan, and she implemented it from there, and I stayed with her, and like I said, through this program, being what it is, she was also able to help me through a very difficult time. So in your own personal in my life. own personal life, you know, even though I pulled away for a moment, she did not let me go, no. <laughs> which was a blessing for me because every, every time she called me, she kept it fresh upon my mind, mm -hmm. and I didn't just fade into the background and just leave. And so, therefore, through her tenacity, I have been involved in this group and I really thank God that she has formed this group because it is very necessary in the area that we, in which we live. It's necessary all across this state mm -hmm. and we're talking about the New Steps Reentry Program for Youth. Now Ms. Connie, I've always wanted to ask you this question. Have we identified numbers, specifically in our area? Mm -hmm. Have we identified just how many kids, young people, men and young women are uh, trying to re-enter back into society? Oh, there's there's hundreds. Um, I know that I've dealt with Flick. Yes. I've had mm -hmm. them on the show before, mm -hmm. and I know that they do a tremendous program. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. But I've always wondered about the numbers. There, there are, tr uh, tr there's a tre tremendous amount of people that are coming out of the, um, a prison, uh, the young people and the adults. Um, let me let me kind of go back. Um, I have two programs that I work out of New Steps Reentry for Youth. One is Gatekeepers, 
That's probably what you were yes. thinking about. <laughs> the Men's Story Circle Group, and uh, that's a reentry part of uh, the program uh, of New Steps. And also have Silent Cries Youth Domestic Violence Program. And so um, we deal with youth that have been in the cycle of incarceration. I mean, I'm sorry, youth that have been in the cycle of uh, domestic violence are affected by it. And uh, for gatekeepers, it's for men that are coming out of prison that have been targeted by incarceration and recidivism and, uh, and violence. Um, we know that when they come out of prison that they don't always have the means to get back on their feet. So what we do at gatekeepers, we try to um, teach the families and the community the needs that those kids and those, those adult men need uh, when they come out of prison, be it um, social security cards, be it uh, a place to live, uh, be it um, whatever, whatever need they, they, may, they may have, because a lot of them don't have families to, that backs them up when they come out. So we'll try, we try to be like a, a community-based program that can help them. If we don't have all the answers, we always refer them out to other programs that can help them. But we try to have this monthly stir circle group for the men so that they can come in and they could talk about the problems that they have. They could communicate what they need. What is the one most important thing for a person to realize when they are on the verge of reentry? What would you say? I would say the most important thing that they need to realize is that they're not perfect. A lot of them come out and they still have the mentality of, of prison. Um, and like nobody will give me a chance. Yeah, and, and they're like, okay, well, I'm, I'm a, they're oppressed. And so they, they end up being, not trying to press forward and change the mindset that they have. You know, they still have this prison mentality. They're still walking in that, that particular way. And they need to be where they can have support, a support system or somebody that really cares, that can give them the information that they need. They may just want to, um, they, a lot of them want jobs, but they feel as though because they have a felony, they're not going to get a job. But there are, there are people that do hire people that have been convicted felons. And so we try to have the information that they need at our meetings that would help them to overcome whatever obstacle they're in. And they can re-register to That's vote. Right. They can, all of these things. You all know, of these the, things. All of those things. That's which right. is very, very, it's important. very important. But I do want to ask you one more personal question <laughs> before I get back to Kisha. <laughs> I want to ask you, Connie, what made you do this from the beginning? What made you care about this one particular issue? Well, because of the, my children, I had boy, uh, young men that were going in and out of prison, and I saw that they didn't have, to me, I tried to do everything I could for them. I'm not a perfect mom. I wasn't a perfect mom. I didn't know all the answers, but I tried to do everything I could to help <coughs> them change their mindset, and I was like, okay, you know, they're not getting it. You know, you can't, you can take them to the water, but you can't make them drink. That's right. So, um... What happened was um, I, I began to search, research different things to try to find out, you know, what I could do to help my own children. And um, that's when I was working with Flick. And so a lot of information I got from Flick. And so when I started my own, sometimes we can help other people's kids quicker than we can help our own. And that's, I mean, that's a sad thing to say, but that's the way it is, you know. But... I said, if I was still due for somebody else's child, God was going to take care of mine, regardless if they were in and out of jail. But the reason why I started with this is because of my own children. They were going, they, they, you know, our black young men, they're, you know, they're in and out of jail. Um, they don't seem to have any type of, um, any type of future. They feel like they don't have a future. A lot of things are up against them, you know, and so. And we know and very, are very concerned about the recidivism rate. Yes. Uh, here in the state of yes. Louisiana, that means we see people going in and out, in and, and, out, in and, and out. out. And I think I've always thought you, you have to get to the root of the of problem. The problem. Yes. You have yes. to get to, and I know, Kishai, that we've been talking about this re 
entry program, and we've been talking mostly about males, but do we include any females? Yes, we do. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, we do. We must include the females because yes. the cycle happens between both. Right. There are females incarcerated as well as young men. Right. And mm -hmm. I've always thought that, uh, you know, I've always asked the question, what do people think happens to young boys when their mothers are incarcerated? Are incarcerated? Right, right. What do think? What, what, what do people think happens to those children right, right. when their mothers are incarcerated? Yes. I know that there are a lot of programs that uh, are basically geared toward men and men uh, reentry, but I so pray that somebody will just jump on board and begin to include women well, with the, and encourage women as well. Well, with the, the other program that I have, uh, Silent Cries, that, that's basically targeted with women, domestic violence, but also um, I have another uh, piece that's added into it. It's called Abuse to Incarceration. We know that a lot of young women and, and uh, women have um, offended because they were abused. And so we want to let the, those women know they're incarcerated. We want to let them know that we're there for them regardless of what mistake that they made. When they're coming out of prison because of these offenses, we want them to know that we're here. We're here for you. And whatever we could do to help you as well as males, we, we would do that. You know. Now, I know, Keishai, that we're all on social media, and mm -hmm. that uh, where can we find you? You can find me on Facebook. I don't <laughs> do too many of the other things yet, but I'm, I'm is, about to get savvy on that. <laughs> is the reentry program on Facebook? Yes, it is. Yes, it okay, is. so how do, how do we find that? Just go to? New Steps Reentry for Youth. Um, New Steps yes. Reentry for Youth, mm -hmm. and you'll find a link to all the programs that you have? Yes, ma'am. New Steps, when you, when you go to New Steps Reentry for Youth, you're going to find the Gatekeepers Program. And then if you go to Silent Cries, uh, no, you, if, if you go to Breaking Your Silence, um, uh, you will find um, the, silent. the Silent Cries link. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we're here to talk about an event that you have especially scheduled mm -hmm. for the Lafayette area. Right, right. And why did you choose Lafayette? Well, um, we were just talking about that. We were reiterating on some some stuff that we had a long time ago. God had placed upon our hearts the ones that were when we first started out um, to expand some things and and uh, basically for networking purposes because we don't always have every all the answers. We wanted to come and network with other organizations that have programs similar to ours and let them know what we have going on and if we can help them in any way or they can help us, you know, we would be appreciated. So the program, the presentation that we have on the 24th is basically a way of us presenting ourselves to the community, uh, letting them know what we do, and also they can present themselves to us. And if it's anything that information that we have that we can share, we will share it and they're welcome to share it with us also. And is, are we including uh, families? Are families yes. inclusive? Yes, most definitely. Families we really want, they have to be included. Right. Yes. Family, bless, family is actually the root or the foundation right. of the That's healing right. of these people That's who are right. going in and out of prison because of, you know, faulty mm -hmm. or, or should I say ill um, systems or foundations in their lives. This is why some people have wound up in the system because their foundation was shaky and they were searching for things on the outside and those things actually led them to worse things. And without making the right choices or having people to guide them to make the right choices, you know, or to help them to make the right choices, they made choices that wound them up in these situations. Now, when you have a family, whether it's of blood or whether it's of engraftation, because we, we are engrafted sometimes mm -hmm. into families That's that right. take us in, tell us that we are important, mm -hmm. and tell us that we can make it. We all have to have these systems, whether they were born of us or God just sent them into our lives. So therefore, these organizations should not just target the person who has the issue, but everything that Everybody goes on around them right. and help guide them to know whom you should, you know, maybe hook, link up with or 
maybe who you should stay away from because in recidivism you don't want them to go back around the same That's environment right. That's right. you don't want them to go That's back right. to the same choices that they made before which will wind them up in the same back situations the same that they had before right. Right. so therefore we are actually not only a community community activism group we are actually a family mm -hmm. We are a family of people who have love in our hearts for these people that need the help and that are willing to reach out for the help that they need. And let me tell you, you are rare because there's <laughs> not a, like, a lot like you. <laughs> I just want to say the event will be held here in Lafayette at the Hyman Park Recreation Center on March 24th. And it kicks off at what time? At 6 o'clock. At 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. in the afternoon. And you are most certainly welcome. We want to invite... Uh, Anybody uh, who would like to uh, participate uh, to come, we know that there are several groups here in this area. We extend the information to you. Uh, there's some wonderful testimonies that I've heard uh, from ministers and leaders in this community, and I'll certainly pass this information on to them and uh, get you some people there. Uh, 6 o'clock, March 24th at the Hyman Park Recreation Center. And uh, it's for the entire family. It's for anybody uh, that you are concerned about. Yes. Maybe you will learn something that day yes. that will help you through. And uh, we are so glad that you are coming to our area. That day, when a person attends, what can they expect? Well, they can expect... You're going to do the presentation. Yeah, we're going to do the presentation. We're going to have some testimonies also. And we're going to have a few other... Uh, Keisha can sing, so she'll be singing. And uh, another young lady that I'm, I'm hoping and praying that that's able to come, which uh, is her cousin, Shanita uh, Moore. Shanita I'm hoping Moore. that she's able to come also, and they both can sing. And... Um, but uh, whatever God puts on our heart, um, we're going to bring information. We're going to have, um, I'm going to have a youth advocate because I do have a youth advocate for Silent Cries uh, for the domestic violence part. Mm -hmm. And she's supposed to be there and she's very um, versed about uh, information on domestic violence for, key, for youth. Yeah, and she's... Um, She's only 13 years old, yes. I believe. She's really? Only, yeah, she's, and she speaks very well. Uh, and I'm so proud of her. So she's going to be there. And um, we're going to have another gentleman there. His name is Kenny Guy. He's coming, and he's going to speak on the gatekeeper side and do a testimony about what he went through and stuff like that. So we just, um, just want to come, and we just want to be down-to-earth people. We're just people like everybody else, but we have a heart for, like Keisha said, we have a heart for your loved ones. And that's what really what, it, what it's really about. We target basically the trans transformational healing, which is the healing from the inside out. And we target uh, restoration within the family when they come in, restore the family, restore the men back into the rightful place where they need to be, the heads of their families. And um, we, just, we just basically... Um, just want to be a help to the community. Now, I know you've both heard some success stories. Can mm -hmm. you share at least one? I am one. You are one. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So am I. <laughs> because had it not been for the heart of this woman and her perseverance in me, because I can be quite the, the loner. <laughs> I can be the yeah. one that will stand there and be like, I'm going to shake until I get strong again. Mm -hmm. But this time, the Lord offered me help that yes. I had never asked for because I didn't know how to ask for help. I had never been abused before in past relationships. As a matter of fact, I married the man twice, <laughs> okay, because of um, a peer system that did not understand the ramifications of the things that were going on around me. They didn't see the hurt. They didn't see the brokenness. And you didn't show it. And I didn't show that's it at all. Right. And see, that's why her, her group is named Silent Cries. Because there are some of us that are there. We're crying right in people's faces and nobody and, knows and nobody it. There are no it. tears that's being right. dropped. There's all smiles and all energy mm -hmm. and everything. But when they go home, when I went home behind closed doors, mm -hmm. there was so much abuse. Yes. So much discouragement. So much death. Because when you are being abused like that, things in you tend to be, begin to wilt. It's like a flower. If you cut at that flower, or you don't water it, or you neglect it, or you even scream at flowers, because we know that plants, you can talk to them and they live. 
Jesus Christ talked to a plant and it died. He cursed it at the very mm -hmm. root mm -hmm. of, the, right. of the problem. Mm -hmm. So when she was there for me and she just, it, it, she didn't even know what was going on. She was no. just there for me. She was like, I need you to come on back. I need your energy. I need you this. She was calling back the things that were in me yes. that everybody thought was, you know, just there for me. But I didn't know how to use it for me. She had to evoke it in me. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that she was there to do so. Because I could have just, I just could have breathed to death. Right there before everybody's eyes. And nobody knew why I had changed or mm -hmm. why I had become such a bitter or just isolated person because I began to isolate. I had other problems other than my husband. I have two autistic sons. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. a daughter who I'm dealing with different things in her. And I have a younger son who has had to play the oldest because he's trying to hold a family unit together. Yes. Hmm. So with all those things going on and I'm trying to hold everything together myself, God sent me a help. I fell in a ditch and I had somebody to pull me out. And I thank God for that. And the young ladies that come, the young ladies that are able to share, the young ladies that are able to know that they are important and that someone's there for them, even if they don't want to tell us everything, they know that, the, that we're there for them and that they're not alone That's and they right. don't have to suffer in silence and they don't have to stay in those things. And they learn that it's mm -hmm. being ingrained in them because in, how can I say, um, repetition, mm -hmm. when you keep telling somebody something, they're going to believe it sooner or later. Oh, yeah. Whether it's good or bad. <laughs> That's Whether right. Whether it's good or bad. <laughs> and she is, she is such, she's such a godsend. Because even in the days she's not feeling well herself, she will sit there and tell somebody else, you got to facilitate this. She's going to make it move forward. God gives her the strength to have the people, the strength and the resources because, like, mm -hmm. you're here, you're a resource. That's right. That's I'm right. a resource. Mm -hmm. She gives her the, re he gives her the resources to push the vision forward. That's right. And I thank God that she was there for me because I was falling apart. I was falling apart, and then once I began to share with her what was going on, then I was able to heal because I confessed it. Mm -hmm. It was out in the open. I didn't have to hide anymore. I didn't have to suffer by myself, and I knew that it wasn't the worst thing that could have happened. Right. And Be God is good. And God he is. is good. Now, I know you have a, a quick success story about... Uh, Somebody who's been through the program and came through? Well, yes, I have a, a young lady that um, I started out with actually in Flick and uh, the other organization, and uh, she kind of stuck with me in, in the, when I became, you know, when I did my own stuff. And uh, she's basically doing pretty good. She's, um, she's working. She's uh, taking care of her, of her kids. Um, she's learned how to do that through working with us. She's um, a quite a good, a good mother, and a lot of people probably looked at her like she wasn't going to be able to be that, you mm -hmm. know. But I thank God today, and she remembers, she tells me all the time, Mom, she calls, most of all the kids call me Mama. I love you. She said, thank you for all you've done and the time that you took up with me. Once you show them love, they never forget it. They I never know. forget it. They never forget Don't it. Don't forget, folks, it's going to be at the Hyman Park Recreation Center, March 24th <laughs> at 6 p.m. It's the New Steps Reentry for Youth uh, program, and Miss Connie Lewis and Miss Keishai Barty uh, will be there. Uh, a lot, a lot of stuff going on that day. You are certainly invited to attend, especially if you care somebody about somebody and have somebody in your family dealing with uh, some of the issues that That's we've right. been talking about today. We certainly are glad that you made the trip. Thank we you for having us. We are glad that you are connecting uh, with the uh, Lafayette and area. Acadiana area. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, there are a lot of people affected by this issue yes. all across the state. Now, we are learning that the state is uh, uh, not in good shape right now, mm -hmm. but we are believing that your program will grow and yes. grow yes. and grow and prosper and be all that you want it to be. Amen. Thank and you. that uh, we will get some relief. There will be success stories galore. Yes. Coming out 
of a program like this. We thank God that we have somebody like you who experienced it on a personal level oh, yourself. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and that you are still vigilant. Yes. yes. And that you still uh, persist. Mm -hmm. And that is something that uh, you have stuck with. Yes. And you do it not just for yourself and for yourself. Well, it's a ministry. I mean, it's That's something that God. It's something say. that it's something that God placed upon my heart. So I have no other choice but to carry it out. I have right. to do what He say do. We certainly want to <laughs> be able to get the word out. Is there a phone number where yes, somebody um, can? Yes, you can reach. Uh, you can reach uh, New Steps Reentry for you. That area code three three seven four three eight eighteen fifty six. That's uh, three three seven four three eight. 1856. 337-438-1856. If you need to get in touch with these ladies, if you'd like to be a part of this program, please call them. They have traveled uh, to be with us from the Lake Charles area. But this is necessary all across the state. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody needs to uh, take somebody by the hand. Am yes. I my brother's keeper? Am mm -hmm. I my sister's keeper? Mm -hmm. We're here to build the village. That's right. Yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Thank you all so much for mm -hmm. tuning in today. Thank you again. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, Thank you. For Thank coming you so on. Much. Thank you for what you do. And you just keep on keeping on. Thank you. Thank you. That's going to wrap up our program for today. And we'll be back next time, next week, with something else. In the meantime, you be blessed and bye-bye.